Welcome everybody to They Cast from the Coast. My name is Adam Miles, and I'm joined as always by Josh Lambert, Aaron Peerless, and Tim Johnson. What are we watching tonight, Tim? The third part in the Amazing Evil Dead series, 1992's Army of Darkness. Stay tuned. the synopsis tim well in this third chapter we ash finds himself stranded in the year 13 a.d with his car his shotgun and his chainsaw soon he's discovered and thought to be a spy for the rival kingdom and is taken prisoner only after proving his merit in the pit he decides to help the kingdom retrieve the necronomicon which will also help him get back to his own time which they need to battle the supernatural forces at play in the land, Ash accidentally releases the Army of Darkness when retrieving the book, and a amazing fight ensues. It is amazing fight. It was fucking good. Ah, it, Josh, ah. that that was an excellent recap of this movie, there, Tim. <clears throat> good job. Good recap I, indeed. I am impressed. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna start right off the bat and say, how many people here actually remember? The first time you put this movie on and the fucking recap happens at the beginning and getting fucking goosebumps. That is, I swear, something that well, I actually remember when I well, put this movie on. I, I just fucking theater. loved it. I saw it in theater, too. You saw it in so, theater? You lucky bastards. Damn right I did. I saw it. I was so lucky about it. We went, we, we had five bucks to spend and go see it. No, I was one year old. <laughs> so I, I did not see it in theater. Well, you, were there <laughs> you were one year old? Fuck. You were born in 92? 91. All right. You, no, you're, just just, a, you're just a little guy. I'm just happy I'm not the youngest in this group. <laughs> just a little guy. Um, I, I would have been old enough to go see it in theaters, but I got to admit, other than hearing the rumbles in Fangoria magazine that it was coming, I didn't know when it was going to be released. And I was living down in Greenwood in Nova Scotia at the time, and there was no way that it was coming out in theaters down there or anywhere I could go see it. So it literally appeared, it, it like appeared on the rental like shelf for us. And it was just like a surprise, like, holy shit, it's here. And we took it home and we put it in. I had never even seen a trailer for it. Just a couple of pictures in Vangoria. And that was it. All right, Adam, um, me me and Aaron are going to talk about our awesome memories. You go right ahead. seeing Army of Darkness in, in theaters. Not like you're sad. <laughs> I live someplace <laughs> where it doesn't fucking... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to fucking start to show up with some fucking oomph. Well, then start to show up with some fucking oomph. Tim, you saw I, it in theater. I Go. 13, I was 13, 93. I was 13, 4. I was born in 79. I can't do math. Anyways, teenager. <laughs> went to go see this fucking movie, and I was super pumped because I. it was around that time, maybe a couple months earlier, I saw Evil Dead 2 for the first time. And um, I was like, this, this movie's fucking amazing, right? There's a sequel coming out, and it's like in a couple months. So I was I, I was really 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 excited because it was awesome. Come on, to see any movie for the first time in the theater, 
that you're excited about. And I was still at that magical teenage age where I wasn't bitter or let down by too many movies at that <laughs> point. You know what I mean? So yeah, my, my, my experience seeing evil dead. Well, army of darkness was, was, was fantastic. I think, I think it was I, delayed where I was because it seemed to be released. and I was all excited for it. And it wasn't showing up at any of the theaters. I'm like, what the heck's going on? And then it seemed like uh, like a couple months went by, and I drove by the theater, and I'm like, oh, shit, there it is. I got to go see this, right? You, were, you just... were still out west, weren't you? Uh, yes. Yeah, you were still out west. Uh, so it, because uh, I got here in 93. Yeah. Yeah, so it's just before you came here, you saw it. <clears throat> um, I saw it I saw it at Penhorn Mall. No. <laughs> <laughs> Penhorn Mall. I saw it Penhorn Mall. I forgot. And I think it was what, it was one of the first first set of movies I saw without my parents. Like I was and able they, they to just... fucking let you in on your own. Yeah. It's Penhorn Mall. <laughs> Famous players. They didn't give a fuck. They didn't give a shit. Do you Not have your parents' explicit permission fuck. to come in? Yes. Just fucking go. Just fucking get in. Jeez. I was buying cigarettes at the corner store back then. <laughs> Are there titties <laughs> in this movie? When did you first see it, Josh? Was it as sad as Adam? I think I probably first saw it on cable TV, honestly. Good chance. I honestly can't remember the first time I watched Army of Darkness, but I feel now, like I see. Did you see Evil Dead before you saw Army of Darkness, though? Definitely. Okay. Definitely. Because <clears throat> I remember the first time I watched the Evil Dead. Now I might have seen bits and clips of Army of Darkness just on like cable, but the first time I like fully watched it would have been just scrolling through and seeing it after I had watched the Evil Dead. Yeah. Well, I mean, as a benefit to my sad ass fucking story, apparently. <laughs> well, well, it was out on it was out on VHS by the time I got my hands on it, so we had rented it, so I literally just fucking watched it probably about four or five times in a row. Meh. Meh. I remember going to I said yeah. Oh. Not meh. I remember going to Blockbuster and it being on the shelf next to the Evil Dead uh Necronomicon uh copies that were on the wall and always seeing those standing out and be like man those are cool and then beside it is this army of darkness and i had the cover uh with like the spider webs and he looks all scared this one. Oh, that one yeah <clears throat> you know and i don't remember seeing that cover until yeah I, i'm pretty sure like what you were saying it's like a blockbuster version or some shit like that yeah. because i always remember seeing the original poster version similar to the japanese style poster that you have in the background there where he's standing up on top of the car with yeah that one? The original, <coughs> yeah. yeah that's what i always remember seeing so as glorious as it is this was army of darkness the evil dead 3 for obviously fans being released uh sam raimi put the effort into this movie created a more a gargantuan story i want to say like he the, the, it isn't it doesn't follow all of josh's rules it, it no. fucking it, it it doesn't follow almost any of them for a lot of this and this isn't it, a horror movie in my opinion well it's horror comedy it yeah. is a slapstick adventure story with, with horror a horror comedy. icon with, with horror, horror elements. elements, yeah. What the fuck are we talking about it for? I don't know. Because What's the horror the... element that's in this movie? There's skeletons, I guess. The skeletons. army of darkness. The army of the dead coming back to life. Uh -huh. with zombified fucking creatures trying to kill people and eat them. Do you consider the Brendan Fraser mummy movie a horror movie? It's got horror elements. It's got horror elements. <laughs> and yeah, and, the, and the and ride, the ride at Universal Studios is fucking terrifying, so yeah. Oh. Bitch. <laughs> All right. CG on the rock was awesome. CG on the rock. No, that was the mummy two returns. Yeah. yeah something like that. Why are we talking about the mummy? I don't know. Fuck it. Get off the, get off the topic. All right. So here we have a story that moves from the little cabin in the woods to a more grander scale of knights in armor and Arthur, you know, legends and, 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 fucking wizards and everything else that have to do with this um 
it becomes on a bigger scale and you can see that the budget really applies to that too because there are entire scenes in this movie where it's like i was watching this again recently obviously for the show and i was going you know this they don't make movies like this anymore when it comes to the fucking amount of work that they actually put into like the large scale fucking scenes like the battle scenes and shit it was it was it was yeah. pretty damn good you know not a lot of not a lot of by any means cgi or anything to it it was all like fucking green screen stop motion harry house you know uh you know Harry fucking, in the air yeah, 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 Harryhausen Jason, style. Jason and, and the what? Argonauts. Argonauts. Somebody said something else. I don't know. Isn't that what it was called? Jason you and said, the Argonauts. I thought you. I thought you said Jason and the Archibalds. <laughs> and the oh. Archibalds. <laughs> I was like, what? Jason and the Argonauts. Yeah. 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 And Simbad. <clears throat> yeah, Simbad. So yeah, the so the skeleton stop motion. So once again, the story does follow the events of the second movie, where he ends up at the end of the second movie, he ends up on the plains in front of the castle. This kind of takes a little bit more of an artistic liberty, kind of like what they did with Evil Dead Two versus Part One, where they kind of change where he falls into the location and and who's around and what happens because he doesn't blow off the winged demon's head, and they don't praise mm-hmm. him off the bat. He becomes a slave to the to the situation or uh. The, they, they capture him, and they, they take him prisoner. And it, the story plays out that in this time in the world, the Deadites are out and about. And they are wreaking havoc on all the kingdoms and all the people. And it's caused war between multiple groups who believe that they're doing this to each other. In, in, you know, and, it, and it turns out that it's obviously they have a common enemy in, in the end. So... Yeah. The Deadites. The Deadites. All right. So Aaron is very expressive tonight. You know what I'm no. He's feeling it. His whole face. His whole being. His whole beard. Yep. All right. So returning, we obviously have the amazing Bruce Campbell as Ashley J. Williams. All right. Yep. And this is the movie where it really kind of fucking jumps the shark for his character in a lot of ways. He basically turns into the most slapstick version, as Josh put it earlier, of his character. The first one I described as quite pussified. That turns a little bit, you know, badass at the end. In the second one, he's a smooth-ass mother, and he becomes even more badass by the end. In this one... He's just a loud-mouthed asshole right from the very beginning. He is badass. Come and on. And he is badass in a lot of ways. Come on. But reality being, whether people love this movie or not, you can't deny the fucking one-liners and the quips that come out of this movie that have become just part of pop culture in general. Oh, definitely. Like, this movie literally has more, more quotable moments in it. Than ninety nine percent of the fucking movies that exist out there today. You yep. know what sucks though, is that when I sat down to watch this recently for this review, I watched the wrong one. He watched the director's cut. I watched the director's cut from. This so one. I got Bruce. Yeah, no, that's not what I watched. It's probably the same one. That's just a oh, more recent probably. version of it. I don't think I've ever seen the director's cut. No. No. Okay, so this is how you get it out of the box, right? And it yeah. says director's cut. But I didn't see that, okay? Because on the back, it says this. So when I first pulled it out of the, the sleeve, U.S. theatrical edition, right? So I'm talking to my kid or whatever, right? So this is what I first see, but when I open it up, U.S. theatrical director's cut. So I'm just, yeah. Blah blah blah. I put it in, and like all the dialogue is different, and scenes are longer, and there's like shit that I've never seen before. The ending is completely different. Oh, like, it's got the the alternate ending I, attached. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, like I watched the wrong one. So if I miss if I miss some of the the the, the one liners, it's because I watched the wrong one. We definitely have to talk about the alternate ending later. Because that was that was like internet fucking lore forever yep. when when that came out because it had been talked about the fact that it existed, but it was like bootleg copies only. And I remember watching a very shitty standard definition well, copy way back at the beginning of YouTube. So that's what this was. This is the first time they released the director's cut, and it's called the official bootleg copy. 
because the only way you could get it was like bootleg VHSs and stuff because the original director's cut aired like by mistake in a couple places. So nice. there was a couple copies of them that existed. Nice. And, 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 and yeah, and that just kind of pushed the lore even further. So it eventually, I mean, you have high def copies of it floating around there, there yeah. now, like you can see the full ending and stuff like this, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. So obviously we have Ash, we get introduced to Ash's um, love interest in this one, Shay, Sheila, as it would be. Uh, Sheila was hot. M. Beth Davids, who I don't really know her from anything else to tell you the truth. Anybody know her from anything else? She's in Probably a couple things. Much. I no, she is. Um, she was in Bicentennial Matilda and Bicentennial Man, and uh, she uh, in the uh, Amazing Spider-Man played Spider-Man's mom, Mary Parker. <laughs> Very good. Yep. <clears throat> so she played uh, obviously, as I said, uh, Bruce Campbell's love interest in this one, but. She starts off absolutely hating him. Bloody murder! And, you know, grabbing his hair and yanking at him. Her brother dies in battle against uh, Eric's men. Henry the Red. Henry the Red. Yeah, Henry. Henry the Red. <laughs> Eric? I was going to say Eric the Red. <laughs> <laughs> Henry the Red's men. So she takes it out on Bruce and she hopes he dies. And as the synopsis stated, he survives the pit. So she, you know, succumbs to his... Her name's not hands. even Alinda. Her name's not even Alinda. No, it's it's Sheila. Come on. It's, a Sheila. it's Sheila. It's kind of the same syllables. No. no. Linda, Sheila. No. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't even go there. Don't even go there, Tim. Why? <laughs> so we also have a Lord Arthur. So, you oh, know. my God. My first reaction, I forgot all about him. When he takes off his helmet, I go, wow, look at those bangs. Yeah. <laughs> I wrote that down, too. Yeah. Look at those bangs. Likely. The whole, the whole rest of the movie, I call them bangs. <laughs> You're envious, Tim. <laughs> Lord <laughs> Arthur. <laughs> yep. You have... We're going to have a conversation after the show. <laughs> Total conversation. So we have Lord Arthur who runs runs the uh, the local, the local, you know, stronghold castle so to speak. Kandar. castle kandar and uh he's it's him and his men and he's trying to uh you know stave off against whatever's going on in the world around him and they take bruce campbell hostage captured sure do. whatever and they drag him to his supposed death which does not occur we also have the wise man which is uh, a little bit of a comic relief. He's uh, he's he's a little bit. I mean, as the name would state, he's wise to certain things, and uh, he is a a man who has the ear of Lord Arthur. But uh, he, do you know how many things Ian Abercrombie has been in? That man has been shit in like though. shit tons. Like, he played fucking Emperor Palpatine in the Clone Wars. What the like, whole the whole Clone Wars. Senator Palpatine slash the Emperor. It was him. Wow, yeah. I can see. He was that. also he was also one of the more memorable side characters in Seinfeld, who ate his chocolate bar with a fork and knife. <laughs> <laughs> Which, fair, after yeah. yeah, after watching that episode, me and my girlfriend at the time went to the store, bought a bought bunch of candy fair. bars, and we we ate them with forks and knives <laughs> on plates and everything. It was funny. <laughs> Fucking sickos. Killer so the wise man is one of my favorite characters in this movie. Well, of course, he he he's more akin to Ash because he's he's intellectually somebody who's always learning. He's 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 intrigued by Ash, and he sees, you know, based on what he knows of of the transcripts and and everything else of you know who Ash potentially actually is, and uh, and and he he favors towards Ash and and he helps him. And he's, Ash is the hero from the sky. He's the hero who has fallen from the sky. To deliver us from the terror of the deadites. All right. So after the wise men, we have Duke Henry the Red, who's one of my favorite fucking characters in the movie. Just That's gonna just say it. Look like him. <laughs> <laughs> Take that, stupid Adam. <laughs> I mean, we all look like him. I don't know what, you, what you're laughing I was, at. Tim. I was gonna say, I don't know, man. <laughs> Tim's got hair more like him. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Tim has hair, just like him. Just rub it in. Just rub it in. Take that, stupid Tim. <laughs> That's a new name, Henry the Red. That's <laughs> Henry what we're calling him. And and uh, and I love I love 
I love Henry the Red because of his initial discussion with Ash, which is once again just Ash being a total fucking dick in this movie, which is amazing, right? You know, Henry the Red. Wait, leading but two things: Jack and shit. shit. Jack, Jack just left, left town. town. That's one of my favorites. Well, hello, Mr. Fancy Pants. Fancy Pants. Yeah. I love when he says Mr. Fancy Pants. I still fucking use that to this day. People, so you know. much to stain. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, reality being, he's technically the reason Ash is, you know, about to go to his death, right? Because they claim him to be one of Henry's men, right? So, well, yeah. hello, Mr. Fancy Pants. <laughs> right. Uh, Into the pit with those bloodthirsty sons of whores. <laughs> <laughs> See? Look at him remoting. He's fucking feeling it. That's right. That's right. Now, funny enough, I and I, I got to bring up some of these uh, you know, kind of characters that appear in the movie as well that are that are of interest. So we do have a Linda, obviously. Right. So we have a Linda at the beginning of the movie who's actually played by Bridget Fonda, and I couldn't remember this until it fucking she appears on, and I'm like. Is that who I think it is? And I had to go and I had to look it up on IMDb. It's fucking. Uh, I did the same thing, Adam. Yeah. I mean, right off the bat, what the fuck? (laughs) Can we talk about pit bitch? (laughs) Pit bitch. We'll talk about pit bitch in a second. But the other one that intrigued me a lot too was the possessed witch from inside of the room when Ash is being, you know, like fucking coddled and fed and everything else. It's played by Patricia Tallman. And I did not realize that one at all until I was looking up the credits in this movie. And I love Patricia Tallman. I think like, Josh, she's... Josh, do you know who that is? Have you ever seen the remake of Night of the Living Dead, 1990? Directed by Savini? Yeah. She played Barbara. She played Barbara. Which one's Barbara? The, the main girl. Like, the one who's, oh. you know, coming to get you, Barbara. You know what I mean? Like, oh, the brother yeah. dies at the okay. beginning of shit. She she is an amazing iteration of that character, and she's a great actress, and she was in a whole bunch of other stuff that's very popular. But, like, fucking Patricia Tallman's even in this movie. Like, I love it. This is great. What it's showing for her on IMDb, though, is that she was the one at the end. Oh, it is, isn't that's it? What, it yeah. Is. Oh, okay. That's and okay. That's Okay, so she was so she was the one at the end that that uh, you know who the hell are you? That was good a... job, Adam. Well, what are you gonna <laughs> say, right? The possessed witch. I thought it, you know when I was looking at it, it's all characters under makeup, so who, whatever. Um, but yes, let's talk about Pit Bitch, Tim. Yeah, played wanna... by Billy Brian. Who, who, <laughs> who? Billy Brian? Wow. Actually, he's been in so much so shit much shit. Time. It's ridiculous, yeah. though. It sounds like I'm being a dick, but like, let's just look. Okay, so he was in fucking Dune. He was in Pet Cemetery Two, Army of Darkness, Species, Phantom, Species Two, Jurassic Park Three, uh, Dreamcatcher, uh, Cat in the Hat, Village, Curse of Chucky, Ghostbusters. The new one. But not only that, like, he was, he's also a master fabricator. Like, he's an effects artist, and he was working with K&E on this movie. Those were all the movies that he he made, but his claim to fame, he was the state puff marshmallow man in the original Ghostbusters. He was the guy in the suit. Yep. Love it. Billy Bryan. Sound like I was making fun of him, but no, (laughs) sir. No, sir. And of course, we always have Ted Raimi in the movie. So he plays, he's, yeah. he's literally credited as Cowardly Warrior. <laughs> I love, I thought he was great. <laughs> was he playing like four parts in this whole movie? Oh, he probably plays some Shemp characters, like some. Oh, I'm sure. Most likely. Yeah. Do you right? know the story of the, uh, the pit monster? No, please proceed to tell us. So the effects artist made it and showed Sam and Sam's like, eh, I don't know looks kind of cheesy and then he invited sam into the studio to look at it and he had billy in the costume standing static and sam thought it was a mannequin so sam's like looking up at it he's like ah i don't know about this and this and this and then he like jumps out at him and grabs him and sam's like that that scared the shit out of me this has to be in my movie you have to put it in my movie (laughs) your sam raimi impression is fucking amazing by the way 
Yeah. Real nasally. Yeah. <laughs> it has to be in the movie. <laughs> Oh man! Okay. I just love how Sam Solid was like, "No, that looks silly," and then he scared the shit out of me. He's like, "Put it in my movie!" <laughs> <laughs> oh man! All right, so we've talked. I mean, there's not really a lot that we can talk about about the characters here. But let's let's. The only other one that's of real interest is also Bruce Campbell, and it's obviously Ash. Evil Ash. Do you know what though? Before we get into that, for the longest time including in up to my current viewing, I always just assumed that was someone else and not Bruce Campbell in the makeup. But watching it this past time, holy shit, that's Bruce in that fucking makeup. Yep. He he does the voice similarly in a couple of other things that he does, so that's how I always knew that it was Bruce Campbell. But man, it's... It's fucking good. Like he does, it is an entirely different character when, when it really comes down to it. Right. It is, yeah. it is the toxic side of Ash. You know what I mean? The evil side I'm of Ash. Bad Ash. And you're good Ash. I love that goes, scene. Right? And I'm good Ash. And, and I'm good Ash. <laughs> Give me the t-shirt. <laughs> <tubes. laughs> oh, fuck. But just when he goes, you're good Ash. <laughs> oh, oh. So, so yeah, so that, I mean, that brings up a good point. There was, there was this movie, when I said earlier that this movie has some of the most iconic quips, quirks, and one-liners, as much as this movie is probably not everybody's favorite in the series by any means, it still has undeniably iconic scenes too, like the mini ashes, the evil ash fight scenes, the, the deadite battles at the end, you know, I love the mini ashes like every time i fucking watch this movie i giggle my ass off at just the the, the amount of times that sam raimi must have put bruce campbell through <laughs> hell doing the the mini characters you know running around what about bill mosley bill mosley he was in this what's he what was he as dead eye captain Bill Mosley. I think he was. Really he didn't even Holy get. Shit. He didn't even he get even... top rating. Yeah. He was just the voice, I think, wasn't he? Are we sure? It just says he's credited as Deadite Captain. That's who I thought played the captain. No, that. Well, yeah. Yeah. But the the captain is the. No, skeleton. I think. Yeah, I think well, the the skeleton. I think he did the voice. It's, yeah. it's, now that it's I'm the like voice. About it, I was like, yeah, so okay. it totally sounds like Bill Because it, uh, it credits the Dead Eye Captain as, as having the uh, the moments where the animated skeleton's dragging another one up out of the grave saying, Welcome back to the land of the living. Right. Now pick up a shovel and get digging. But that's, a, that's another name that's pretty prominent in, in Hollywood, right? Bill. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Sam pulled out all the stops to get as many of his buddies in these films, as he does in all of his projects. Like, if you look at the, the carryover between Sam Raimi's projects, there's almost no new inclusions when he does a show or does a film or does anything. Okay. You want to add, add another character? Bruce Campbell's car- brother, Don, was in this movie. <laughs> he played Don many... Campbell, f- yeah, he was just one of the knights, wasn't he? Yeah, he was, he was just a fake shemp that was, like, throwing on makeup for random scenes in the movie, so... <laughs> I, th- I think he was one of the knights, too, in the initial scene. Well, there's a good chance of that. The picture of him on IMDb has an epic mustache. <laughs> it does. Oh, like, William Lustig was in this movie. William Lustig? Lustig. Who the fuck is that? He's the guy, he's the guy who made uh, Maniac. Oh, yeah. And, and uh, he was also, he was also been in other Sam Raimi things. Like, uh, he was in Darkman. Lustig. Lustig. <laughs> William Lustig? No, he, uh, William Lustig is responsible for Maniac, Maniac Cop, Maniac Cop 2, uh, the, the classic direct video Uncle Sam, which is... So just... how come all the Raimis look the same? They really do. Like, it's, it's not, it, it goes far beyond family resemblance. Like, they, like, I just lo- brought up Ivan Raimi, yeah. and he looks like Sam, but with no hair. He looks so like Sam Ted. more than he looks like Ted, but Ted looks like... Sam yeah, it's, and it's weird. Yeah. It's weird. 
Like, I wonder if, like, their dad looks exactly like them, too. Or, Probably. like, mom. I don't know oh. what ethnicity they are, but they do have a very distinct look. I think they're Greek or something. I was gonna, yeah, I was going to say, yeah. Nice. All right. Mediterranean of some sort. <laughs> I'm going uh, to fucking Google it. While Tim's fucking Googling it, I want to hear what Aaron has to say about the effects work in this movie. Thank God it's not a long list. <laughs> Are you ready, Tim? Are you ready? Are you ready? Jazzy! Oh, oh, it sounded like you were getting ready to do SpongeBob. <laughs> Lord, Who lives in a pineapple under the sea? <laughs> Ashley Williams. <laughs> Boys, I don't have a lot of notes on this because this is just this this movie's awesome, and and the the special effects uh, crew that was involved with this, there is a ton of them, and I'm not going to be able to name all of them, but the core crew, the supervisors and stuff is like uh, obviously KMB effects group. You got Howard Berger, Greg Nicotero, Robert Kurtzman, but you've got the costumers that had to come up with all the costumes for all these characters in a period time piece, which is absolutely elaborate. You got the armor, you have all of this craziness on top of it. You got the, the, uh, the pit bitch, which is like a full headpiece, like crazy. Um, so I'll start out with when we first see Ash. Um, I noticed that this, the white stripe on his head was on the opposite side. Uh, so that was my first my first thing, and then you don't really see it for the rest of the film. Really, it kind of depletes and 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 yeah. So the continuity between Ed One, Two, and Army Darkness, um, it's obviously not existent, right? <laughs> obviously, and not not number one, but yeah. Um, I've uh, some of the notes I've got is like detailed sets, definitely a, a huge budget, bigger bigger budget. They had to you know, mimic a castle and things like that. Um, into the pit with these bloodthirsty sons of whores. I have that written down as that's one of my favorite lines in this thing. <laughs> um, rigid collodion scars. They're always awesome. And uh, Bruce has always got them on his face and things like that. But what I did notice is throughout the whole film, they're very, very, they don't move at all. So the continuity with that, those boys were on it. Right. Um, rigid collodion, for those of you that don't know, is a scarring, uh, oh, it's almost like a best makeup ever. It's pretty yeah. neat. That's how I, I had never seen it Joker until this stars. year. Yeah, it's my you've favorite. Never, you've never seen it, Josh? I had never seen it until they did some effects for my uh, Walter when, White. When I did oh, his yeah, Breaking yeah, Bad yeah, makeup on the, yeah, yeah. the uh, and the busted up nose. It's yeah. pretty cool stuff. Adam yeah, didn't it, tighten yeah. the, the bottle and it all dried out, and I had to buy oh, him. That's unfortunate. I did tighten the bottle, you bastard. Mm. Yeah, it sometimes it doesn't last. It's it's very uh, picky that way. Oh, can I just, on a side note? Yeah. You purchasing makeup. Can you get bigger bottles than what you get? Uh, yeah. The bottles I always get are always that big, and I, I want, like, that Do much. you know why, though? Because it dries out. Because it dries out. And it does it to everybody, man. It really yeah. does. So you don't want too much. I can get the bottles for, like, cheaper. But, yeah. For those of you that don't know what Rigid Collodion is, it's a scarring... Uh, uh, material that you brush on um, and you let it dry and it pinches your skin to give you a, a, a like a 3D depth look for a, for a, a, a scar that's healed. It's right? almost like when you get super glue on your hand. Yeah. It kind of shrinks Similar. it up. Yeah, and it doesn't... It always, remi it always reminded me of like nail polish remover type right. of yeah. smell. So, I mean, any makeup kit that you see on set of any movie anywhere you would definitely have somebody with rigid collodion in their in their uh, kit so um that i was impressed with the way that 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 stuck true throughout the whole film i didn't see him move around at all uh, I, uh the stump looks much better in comparison to ed2 so his stump was actually stumpish and you couldn't really make you know see his fists wrapped you know so um the she bitch, what Adam was referring to earlier in that room where where uh, Ash was being fed the grapes and and shit like that, um, the she bitch makeup, wow, that was fantastic. Love I love it. the camera shots of that of her on the ground. She's got the eye that opens. The contact lenses again are fantastic, and then she gets that grin on her face, just 
A1. You know, you can tell it's it's uh, hot foam prosthetics and things. And uh, yeah, they did a fantastic job uh, blending everything out and coloring it. And just... it was pretty subtle when you look at Evil Dead Deadites too. Like it, it wasn't was... like crazy Evil Ed with like six sets of horse teeth or anything like that. So good though. It was very yeah. effective, right? Uh, they would have put like probably a bald cap on her, uh, done the prosthetics and then put a nice wig on with the mesh and everything and then pulled it down around. And yeah, it was just a, a fantastic, fantastic look. They did an awesome job on that. Um, so when Ash goes to take his head off the uh, stove, it's always got me no matter what. Even the first time that I saw it, he's got a face burning on the, on the stove. It's like even a park when he gets up off, and he's got to pry himself off of it. Yeah. Like, at least have something there. I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know why they, maybe Tim will fill this in later. I don't know if there's any trivia on that or whatever, but uh, that always, always got me for some reason. I don't know why they, well, there wasn't a mark or anything on there, right? Yeah. Um, Josh, you don't, you don't have any idea why? I think it was probably just a last second thing they were in that set. And, and Sam then... Raimi's like, yeah, stick your, stick your face on the stove, Bruce. <laughs> Bitch. Yeah. <laughs> uh, one, uh, one of my other favorite lines is good, bad. I'm the guy with the gun. That wasn't in the version that I watched. What? No, that was pissed. That was when, that was my first initial. Uh, Wait, what am I watching moment? Something's wrong here. Because <clears throat> he says something different like, I, I have a little bad in me too or something along those lines before he shoots and I'm like that's not as badass good <laughs> bad I'm the one with the gun <laughs> good. yeah I wasn't I, I that's obviously one that's probably my second favorite line um, great makeup from the shotgun shotgun blast uh, I thought that was pretty cool you saw the little pellet marks and stuff and I was looking for an edge right next to his mouth couldn't see it all they had soot on it so and and you could see a little sheen from maybe the gelatin or the uh, or the foam that they had run it in, um, but it was it was really good. I you can hardly notice um, any SPFX person looking at something like I can probably tell um, the difference between the actual flesh and the the prosthetic. But uh, uh, for anyone else, I don't think anybody would ever notice the trans the, the transition between the flesh and the uh, the hot foam. Mm. Um, stretch face was awesome uh, <laughs> when he. <laughs> When the book, the first book sucks him in there. <laughs> Get along. I remember so look on his, he sold it with oh, his eyes. Oh, like, oh, oh. <laughs> and when he's got his mouth, you can see it. You can see it. He's, he's shaking his head a little bit, but you can see just a little bit around his eyes where it's wrinkling because he's he's acting and you can see it just a little bit up and around his eyes, but it's, it's absolutely uh, fantastic. There's a couple different... Uh, shots in there so there's a couple different makeups so that whole scene probably took a lot of time to yeah. take one of those off reapply the second stage where it's shrinking on them so that probably would have taken like a good few days to shoot just that scene i would think right mm -hmm. and and to get it right um captain deadite uh, i call him captain deadite but the, the the captain of the deadites or the or the lead of the deadites makeup was uh, amazing as well uh apparently bruce was wearing that i didn't even know that that was bruce to be quite honest um i thought that being in that makeup would have been i mean bruce is a he's a trooper i i, I all the stuff that the Sam's thrown at him over the years. I mean, the guy's just a trooper to be in that full makeup and, and, uh, and armor and everything. Just crazy. Um, claymation again is always fantastic. And they used it again all the way through these films. I love it. Um, again, going back to like clash of the Titans or Sinbad or, you know, Jason and the Argonauts, Jason and the Argonauts, Tim. The Archibalds. I, I appreciate that. Thank you. And that's an 80, <laughs> like, pronunciation is key um i thought a really cool little um a really cool little what do they call it easter egg yes that's it thank you a, little, a cool little easter egg that i saw uh, on this one i mentioned it before or or i'd or i'd seen it before is the fangoria magazine in the trunk of ash's car yeah i think yeah. that's pretty, pretty cool <laughs> Uh, I always I always look for it when it's in there, and I think there's another comic book in there um, that I'd seen previously as well. Um, there's a bunch of cool stuff in his trunk. There is, yeah. 
so yeah, wrapping up, my practical effects are absolutely amazing uh, for for this grandeur of of what they're shooting with the with the army of deadites and even the other army and you know. Um, in some of the shots where the arm where the deadites are attacking the castle and the camera kind of pans slowly past the deadite, you see the skeleton sitting there, and then you see what would be a skeleton, but you see mesh over the eyes. Mm. So if you look carefully, you can see the mesh over the eyes of the actual actors that are in makeup and the, and the animatronics that are around the actor, which is which is kind of cool. Um, if you look closely, you can see it. If you're not paying attention, you you probably won't even pay attention to it there. Yeah, that. it was a pretty good mix of puppets and then actual actors. Absolutely. And you can tell which ones are puppets because they move kind of strange. Plus, uh, they're just skeletons. Exactly, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but I think they nailed it with the eyeball effects uh, on, on Ash's shoulder when he tears that away and the eyes kind of... That, that is actually gross because you get the slit there and then it, it's almost like the eye pushes up and then opens and looks around and, and then sucks back into the shoulder, right? That, that effect always got me pretty stoked um but this was a massive undertaking with the effects department and if anyone looks at imdb and looks at the credits and things i mean just go in and look at the makeup department and special effects department because they're massive the whole movie was based around uh, effects right whether it be makeup or or uh, you know a pyro or what i mean this whole movie was based off of, of uh, off of effects one big effect I watched a couple interviews with Berger and Kurtzman talking about how they had like 200 skeletons and Sam would just have them fucking blow up their skeletons like every day and they'd have to go out and like reassemble skeletons from all the <laughs> blown up torsos and Sam would be like, yeah, we, I want like 30 more of them over here. And Kurtzman was like, we blew them all up last night. They're, they're gone. Well, we'll just stick them back together. <laughs> that sounds like what a director would say too. And that's what they had to do. Yeah, yeah, just stick them back together, yeah. So yeah. they were, like, zip-tied and glued back together, these skeletons that they just blew the shit out of. Uh, that's yeah. brilliant. I know, twice. Yeah, so, so you know, with all the effects that are in this movie, there's, there's a lot of slapstick elements, and we've talked about this a couple of times, too. So this movie really does play on the comedy side of it. So right up from where you have the scenes where he's trying to choose between the three books, you know, one of them turns into the flying back creature and like attacks him. One of them tries to suck him in and, you know, and the other one's the real one, but he's got to say the three words, you know, and he doesn't quite say every single solid syllable. Single exactly. solitary syllable, but <laughs> I basically <laughs> basically said them yeah which i love turns out you know the ending of the movie whether it's the original ending or the the alternate ending it, it has <laughs> a, a, an adverse effect on the whole story as it is um and uh, one of my favorite scenes in the movie in all honesty is actually after he picks up the book and shit just starts to go to hell in the in the actual uh, graveyard and it's like fucking uh you know tombstones are like flying up out of the ground and he trips and it's like the skeletons like slapping him and shit and it's right fucking <laughs> three stooges and in, in very his effort. three stooges yeah. very three stooges and, and they play the all oh, and you know oh, ha, 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 right and then <laughs> right my down favorite the fucking... was when he goes oh all <laughs> the fucking fists. <laughs> but you don't see it until it happens and he just yeah. his reaction to it like oh. yeah <laughs> It, it really shows the comedic side of not just Sam Raimi, but Bruce Campbell, too, obviously, right? Where he, you know, he plays that well. Hey, guys, I'm Felissa Rose, Angela from Sleepaway Camp, and you're listening to They Cast from the Coast. Yeah! <laughs> Um, Josh. Yeah. Let's let's hear your notes. Okay. Uh, this was a viewing I had of Memory of Darkness, uh, June second, two thousand twenty, at twelve forty-three p.m. Uh, first note I had: 
Bruce Campbell versus the Army of Darkness. That's the title screen that they show, and it's never really given its proper due diligence. It's never, like, on the fucking DVD or anything. I don't know where they came up with this or why. Oh, it's on that one. Okay, that's good. <laughs> but why? Bruce? It's not Bruce Campbell. It's Ash versus the Army of Darkness. But really? Ash, Bruce Campbell, same fucking guy. I mean... <laughs> Bruce gets pretty sour when you call him Ash. It's true. To the fact that if you meet him at a convention, apparently, and you call him Ash, when he signs your shit, he'll sign it, Bruce, don't call me Ash Campbell. Oh, I just want to call him Ash to his fucking face so he'll sign it that way for me. Ash, <laughs> baby. Uh, what happened to Ash's white hair? Nice dissolve off the saw blade in sun. Okay, before you go any further... Yeah. I love how they handled his white hair in the TV show Ash vs. Evil Dead. Okay. It shows multiple oh, times. He has, a, he has a he has a yeah. sti- oh, he has a stick of like uh, uh, a boot grease cover, and he just <laughs> every now and then he just stucks it over the side of his head. It's hilarious. Love the kids just wailing on Ash when these fucking bring them in the stocks, and the kids are just like punching him in the stomach. <laughs> yeah, I hear you little shits. Yeah, uh, Henry the Red, the true Lord of the North. You ain't leading but two things, Jack and shit, and Jack just left town. Well, hello, Mister Fancy Pants. Yep. I feel like all these notes are just going to be his one-liners. Just, just one-liners, yeah. Uh, the backflip really sets the mood for this movie. So in the pit, when the pit beast just starts doing fucking somersaults and backflips. It's like, okay, this is this is the level of what you're going to get in this movie. Buckle up, motherfuckers. Uh, such an Indiana Jones move to bring a boomstick to a sword fight. I wrote, nice bangs, douche knight. <laughs> First you want to kill me, now you want to kiss me. Blow. Blow. That was one of my favorite scenes when he gets yeah. slapped, man. When he gets slapped Eating like grapes. That, that looks Blow. real, man. That slap looks when she brings her brings him the uh the, his blue shirt. I made this for thee. <laughs> you always use a horse blanket. <laughs> he gets I love how self aware Ash is at this point in the series. Yeah, he Yo, she bitch, let's go. The goblet that gets crushed uh by the glove is made of foam and there's one made of rubber. And they're owned by collectors that I know. Away. And it's a pretty cool little prop. And apparently it's cast off of like an actual pewter goblet that you can just find. Uh, one of the fellows in the KOS group posted that he found it at like a yard sale and it spotted it right out. He's like, yep, that's the goblet. Like it was a mass produced goblet. Wow. Nice. Uh, give me some sugar, baby. Klaatu, Barada, Niktu. Uh, also, the name of the three guys at the Jabba's Barge. The three skiff guards. Yep. And it's from... What's the original movie that it's the from? The Day the Earth Stood Still. Earth stood still. The three yeah. words used to stop stop the uh, the havoc, basically. Yeah. Uh, sets a fire and warms both hands, despite one hand being made of metal. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, definitely inspired by Gullible... Gulliver's travels with the mini ashes when they like tie him up. Uh, the eye on the arm always reminded me of the tyrant from Resident Evil. Yep, good when call. the eye first pops open. Uh, the dummy head was pretty bad. When he lops the head oh. off, it was pretty bad. Uh, bad Ash has an even more exasperated chin somehow. Good, bad, I'm the guy with the gun. Uh, three books. So, are the other two just decoys, do you think? Or do you think they're other Necronomicons? Or I other think they're other forms? Necronomicons from different so. fucking timelines. And I think that there's other magic words you have to say before you lift them. Yep. Hence why he couldn't pick those ones up, because he didn't say the words first. Didn't say the words. Uh, definitely an N-word is a quote. And I was <laughs> Nickel. Necktie. Something... Definitely an N-word. Something's wrong. Something's amiss. I can see why you're the village wise man there, bud. Like, <laughs> something is clearly very wrong. The entire earth is shaking. 
the skeleton hands perfectly show Sam's love for the Stooges and Slapstick. Uh, Evil Ash's appearance. Why not just have him dig him out? So, did you guys watch the version I saw where he just, like, fades into existence? Well, it isn't, like, a fading. It's almost like like a stop-motion animation of his parts, like, coming up uh, and, like, building him. I, right? It, sound, it the seemed like Star watched, Trek, like, phaser. It was the hand coming out of the grave. That's what I saw. Yeah. Wow. And it's, it's weird. It's theatrical. It's like... Like a Star Trek fucking teleporter beam, where they like reconfigure in like a million pieces. It looked very weird. That uh, sounds it, dumb. The way the it way was. that I the way that I've always pictured it is it's almost like it's his pieces are like coming out and rebuilding him from the ground up. It's weird. Yeah, yeah. I I missed that, Adam. Can you do that again? No. <laughs> Continue, Josh. Should have just had him climb out of the ground. Sure. Uh, the quote, like in the deal. Ash is always pissed that he's getting, like, a shitty end of the deal. Like, he, he made this deal to bring you the book. Pronto. Uh, are the skeletons going to bone those ladies? <laughs> Did, Maybe. They have all these slaves, and they're like, yeah, we know what we're going to do with you. Come with me, Missy. <laughs> yeah. Weird. There's uh, a sight the black for stiff, The blacksmith tells you he can count on his steel. <laughs> Who rules? Evil Ash, apparently. I was really hoping you were going to say O'Doyle. O'Doyle, O'Doyle rules. rules. Yeah. <laughs> I was really hoping you Good were going to say that. Uh, fuck. Good reference. I think uh, O'Doyles were all redheads. So. <laughs> yeah. Ash, a retail worker, somehow knows how to make gunpowder gun and train knights in spear tactics. Well, he did have also, the high school chemistry He had those book. books, man. Well, that's my next question. Why does Ash, a grown ass man, have like chemistry ke- textbooks in his trunk of his Delta? Because of maybe what? he was going back to school. No. Who are you to judge him? Me. He also he also it was the the chemistry book, and there was a, a book on steam powered engines or something like this right yeah. behind it. And that's how we got that's how we got the Delta and a copy of Fangoria. Like yeah. what? Yeah. what? What? Strange. Uh, the Battle of Helm's Deep has literally nothing on the Battle of Castle Gondar. <laughs> there below. Bone flutes. I love the bone flutes. When the skeletons are coming in with their little bone bagpipes and bone flutes. That just sounds Excellent. dirty, Josh. Bone, <laughs> flute? bone flute. Bone flute, not skin flute. <laughs> The bone instrument you are most skin. familiar with. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Come on, guys. I know this ain't a PG show, but come on. Uh, I love the Mad Max style Oldsmobile. Mm-hmm. Uh, the quote, honey, you got real ugly. Uh, <laughs> at Evil Ash always reminded me of the Krugan from Highlander. Oh, Krugan? Like the helmet yeah. is skull. Uh, and the theatrical ending, Deadites attack Esmart. I reckon this is what caused Esmer to go out of business and be taken over by Value Stop. <laughs> and that's it. And it's funny because that ending was after they they filmed the original ending, the alternate one, yeah. and uh, with test audiences, they found it was too depressing. Yeah, too sad. So so they literally filmed the uh, the the ending that came out theatrically for everybody in like one day over like Christmas holidays. They were like ghost staffed. They had like maybe ten people on set entirely. Like all cast and crew was like ten people, and uh, the actress was like called in the night before. The the uh, the, the one that uh, basically you know was talking about the story how she thinks it's cute and shit. She was, like, called, like, the night before and was told that she had, like, this part if she wanted it. So it was, like, it was pulled off in, like, a 24 to 48 hour period. (laughs) See, but the thing is, if I had to pick between the two, I'm obviously going to go with the theatrical. It was a better ending. But because I got duped into watching (laughs) the fucking uh, director's cut, the director's cut ending is... As depressing as it is, Bruce Campbell slash Ash sells it. Yeah. I slept too long. Like, we've all been there, guys. 
<laughs> it's very akin to Planet of the Apes, I think. Yeah, I think but, that's yeah. definitely what they were. But not just akin to Planet of the Apes. It's akin to Evil Dead in Evil Dead 2. Like, it's a depressing ending. Like, Evil Dead 2, he's sitting there, and he's, like, basically, like, they're all, hell, hell, and it's, like, a fucking depressing ending. He's stuck in time, basically. And this is the same kind of a thing. And in the first one, it's, you know, the... The, the evil comes for him so i could see the appeal of the original ending i love it just because it actually in my opinion suits the way that all of these fucking movies actually end all right i love them both and i think they both exist in their own timeline <laughs> they absolutely do at this point <laughs> all right well so let's talk about that alternate ending real quick before we kind of you know talk about our our final feelings on the movie and everything um, yeah, let's just skip over Tim's fucking segment of the show. Well, Whatever. we're not we're not getting to that yet, Tim. Yeah, before we talk about our feelings of the movie, yeah, that sounds like we're about to rate it, <laughs> which is the end of the. We're fucking not movie. gonna just, just about rate it, Tim. Yeah. Bugger yeah. off. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so in the original ending, it's the S Mart battle between Ash and the 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 dead out lady played by Patricia Tall Tallman. Um, and you know, it has Ted Raimi, you know, very in unenthusiastically hearing the ending of his story. And he's very cocky as usual. You know, I could have been King, you know, could have led them. Right. But I chose this way. And he didn't say the words exactly as they should have. So, you know, obviously the dead. Yeah, I pretty much said <laughs> Not every single syllable, but you know, but the original ending that they filmed, which was deemed too depressed, had to do with him uh, being barricaded in a in a a cave, basically shelled up in a cave, taking a potion, like a three drops or something of a potion, and saying the words. But he gets like distracted by a noise, uh, some falling rocks, and he takes four drops. He miscounts, and he you know goes to sleep and he wakes up a little too late and it's like he comes out and it's like london in the background and it's like all on fire and there's demons and shit like this and i slept too long as you know the depressing ending so yeah so that was way too apparently way too depressing when people were watching this movie they were happy about the whole movie and then this ending happened and apparently they shit all over it so they went back and they refilmed it on like a it was like boxing day or some shit like this they refilmed the whole ending so tim tim <laughs> you, it's trivia time with tim <laughs> you're getting the stink guy i am getting the stink guy trivia time with tim do it better do it right <laughs> yes sir all right you tim dance, monkey dance i hear you have some trivia for us so it's gonna be trivia time with tim where's the guitar Fucking do your job. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. As we've talked about before, all three Evil Dead films can seamlessly be cut together, which has obviously been done by fans, though some introduction footage in the sequels is lost. I don't know why this is considered trivia, but it's, it's there. Uh, the original draft, Ash loses an eye. Ooh. Did you know that, Josh? I did not know that. Boom, bitch! That is new information no, just, for me. I just read it off the internet like <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my. All right, Bruce Campbell says that in order to make the chainsaw appear like it was always running, tobacco smoke was pumped through the tube that was slid up his right pant leg, up into his shirt, and out into the chainsaw. Um, this, that, was, that, was, that was in trivia time last episode, but... A little more descriptive. Um, an issue of Fangoria can be seen in the car's trunk. The director, Sam Raimi, is showing his gratitude for the publication, including the original Evil Dead, uh, when it initially premiered in 1981. Apparently, Bruce Campbell was extremely displeased with the studio's delay release of the film and its editing of it. He stated that he wasted a, v a year of his life waiting for this film to get released to cinemas. Is that, is that true, Josh? Apparently. You didn't know this? I knew he did not like the original cut, and that's why he worked with Sam Raimi to produce the director's cut. Hmm. Originally, there was only meant to be one creature in the pit. 
Sam Raimi was convinced that to add a second dubbed the pit bitch by its creators after being scared by it by one day. So I'm glad that we got a little, now you know, uh, the full story behind that. Now you know, the full story. Um, Sam Raimi. Now I think this name for the movie would have been fucking dope. Sam Raimi originally wanted to call the movie, the medieval dead, which I heard that uh, yeah. I think would have been awesome. It's so much. I think it's better than army of darkness, the medieval dead. Um, but Universal Pictures refused. The title Army of Darkness was cre- uh, created by Irvin Shapiro, the uncredited producer of The Evil Dead, 1981, and executive producer of Evil Dead 2, 1987, who died two years before the film was made. Raimi then wanted to naturally give the title Evil Dead 3, Army of Darkness, but the studio wanted it to stand on its own from the rest of the series, so it was just titled Army of Darkness. The film was called Army of Darkness, The Medieval Dead, for its UK release. Yeah, this is a weird one. It has a lot of weird titles, like kind of like the Brain Dead, uh, Dead Alive, where it has like three or four alternate titles, depending on where it was released. Yeah. Uh, During filming of the (laughs) cinematic, climactic sword fight at Arthur's castle, Bruce Campbell suffered a small gash to his face when a decorative pin from his cape cut him during a stunt. He was immediately taken to uh, see a plastic surgeon to assess the damage. At the examination, the doctor had to actually uh, to actually have the injury pointed out to him <laughs> because of all the special effects that were all over Bruce Campbell's face. <laughs> During the filming of the Oldsmobile Delta 88 falling out of the sky, it was shot twice. During the first attempt, the 25-ton crane lifting uh, the car failed to failed due to mechanical problems and toppled over over the edge of a cliff at the Jeez. quarry location where filming was taking place. Unfortunately, no injuries occurred because the crane operator jumped from the, cra- the, the, the cab before the crane went over the edge. Days later, a larger 80-ton crane was brought in to remove the damaged crane, then <laughs> reshoot the car drop. In the final edit, uh, in the final edit, elements of the reshoot as well as footage from the original Evil Dead ending were used. Hmm. That's funny. That is funny. That uh, probably must have killed fucking poor Sam to drop his baby like that. Yeah, but I mean, you would think that every movie has a different Delta 88. It's not the same. No, it is the same. That's his Delta. It it had to have been a dummy car for this one They had to get some dummy cars, though, man. Uh, I don't think. I think that's his whole shtick, that that's his Delta. I'm going to Google it. Google it. Well, well, Adam's Googling that. That would have been expensive, losing a crane, and then, you know, having to reset everything. and Yeah. Getting a new crane in, and that would have been pricey. I don't know if you knew this, Josh, but I didn't. Okay. S-Mart is a chain of grocery stores only in Mexico. I, d- I did not know that. Apparently, <laughs> that's where S-Mart, the S-Mart chain is. Mexico. Yeah, but I did it's not, not know that. It's not the, the S-Mart in the Evil Dead. I think that's just a coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but I think it's funny. Uh, the first and last studio film of Bruce Campbell... Starting as the lead. Hmm. Which doesn't make sense. Be- oh, because maybe Army of Darkness 2 wasn't necessarily a studio film. It was still considered indie. Independent, maybe. What the fuck is Army of Darkness 2? What are you talking about? I said the first and last studio film of Bruce Campbell that he starred in as the lead. Right? This movie, okay. Army of Darkness. So, Evil Dead 2, wasn't he the lead in that? Or was well, that, that was before. But it says the first and last studio film that Bruce Campbell starred in as the lead. Yeah, so studio film, because this was the only non-independent one in the series. Yeah, yeah that's what I was, that was what my question was. Evil Dead 2 must have been independent still. It was, yeah. yes. That's why they had that rosebud. Right. Thing. The original script was 43 pages. Uh, 
Uh, Josh thinks he knows everything about Evil Dead, but he doesn't. No, I don't. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, according to Sam Raimi, in the book The Evil Dead Companion uh, by Bill Warren and Char- Charles Napier, uh, Charles Napier was to play Ash's boss in Smart, but the role was totally cut. Likewise, Bridget Fonda was scheduled to have more scene time as Linda. The entire sequence where evil Ash grows out of Ash's shoulder, uh, starting with the eye, was a uh, tribute to the Japanese-American B-horror horror film The Manster <laughs> from 1959. Man. This movie was released in Japan as Captain Supermarket. <laughs> that was the name that's of the amazing. Movie. That's, that's this poster. I'm that's pretty sure that's, that's what this says. Captain Supermarket. That is amazing. Um, contrary to popular belief, Ash does not say the words Klaatu, Barata, Niktu as a reputed uh, tribute to the day that Earth stood still, but a slight variant in which he pronounces the second word Verata. Apparently, this is intentional as the wise, wise man is also heard saying the words this way when instructing Ash on what to do to retrieve the Necronomicon. Yeah. So, take that, Adam. Take that. <laughs> I have taken that, Tim. I'm, I'm pretty sure from what I've read and continue to read that it is his car that they use. The one, not the same make and model. Because I remember him talking about an interview where a point where he's like, yeah, it doesn't even run anymore. <laughs> replaced the engine eight times and done this and done that. Because in uh, Drag Me to Hell, it was literally like towed there, dropped off, filmed, towed to a new location, dropped off. Yeah, I can imagine. It's just, it's it's hard to say, you know, that 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 he would literally drop it multiple times from a crane, that's all. Bruce probably made him do it. <laughs> yeah, you guys done talking? Oh yeah. I'm kidding. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Good trivia time with Tim. Lots of good information. And now it is time to dig down into the depths of how we feel about this movie. Aaron going to pick me again first? Yes! Son of a bitch. Look at him picking favorites. <laughs> okay. What do, you, what do you think, Aaron? <laughs> yeah, tell us what you think. I Aaron, love this movie. Special little boy. <laughs> I love this movie. Special little guy. <laughs> All right, I'm done. Um, I don't know what to say. Like, uh, the makeup effects in this were absolutely amazing. Um... I was fortunate enough to see this in the theater and, and that was absolutely incredible to see this on the big screen multiple times. Um, part of, part of my favorite, you know, trilogy, if you want to call it that, I guess, uh, it just, I don't know. It, I, to me, I, I thought that the second one was, you know, had a little bit of humor in it and then it jumped into the third one where it was kind of all over the place, crazy, you know, lots of humor, not really a horror flick. Um, but, you know, solid for, like I said earlier, it was really solid for the makeup effects and for the sets and the costuming. Uh, obviously, I love the SPFX crew that was on board with this, and they were they were younger when this had come out, and they were, uh, you know, they, they were kind of coming into their own at this point and, and creating new and crazy looking effects for, for film and TV. And, and, uh, I, I was pretty pleased with the outcome of this whole thing. And I, I even, you know, paying attention to how well everything was blended out and, and things like that. I, I, I can't shit on this movie at all ever. Uh, one of my favorites. Um, and yeah, I don't think I can say much else about this man. Like, um, I'm going to give it a, <laughs> this has got to complete the series for me. Um, 
I love Army of Darkness, and I'm going to give it an X. Ooh, first X yeah. of the night, gentlemen. Tim! I feel, I feel weird, because I've been given Xs, like, left, right, and center. You guys All willy-nilly. Just yeah. Just fucking... This X, this X, this X. I watched the movie. Here's an X. You know what? Yeah. I got to add just, like, the, the story and the way that Sam and everybody does this stuff, the way that these films all came together with Dino De Laurentiis and Rob Tapper, Tappert and, and Bruce Campbell and everything. Like, I don't think movies come together like this now. And I really, I think it's, it feels more like a family dynamic, kind of like a, a an Adam Sandler uh, kind of thing where he includes all his friends and everything. And, and they just keep putting out cool things. And I, I can't, I can't help but to support that. And I love that. And that's where I'm going to end it. Nicely Adam. Said. Nicely said. And we go over to Tim. Um, I'm not giving it an X. I'm just letting <laughs> you guys know right now. Uh, for the longest time, this was my least favorite of all the Evil Dead. Um, I, uh, like Josh said at the start, I don't know if it was re- when we were recording or before we recorded. This is not a horror movie. So I don't know why we're talking about this movie. (laughs) But in my defense, what I said was it's a take on, you know, big adventure fantasy movies with horror elements. Um, Watching this the second time, again, like I said, uh, being duped into watching the director's cut. um, I like this movie. Um, I like it a lot more than I ever have since its existence. Um, I have very fond memories of watching it in the, th- the theater for the first time. Um, it was funny, um, but, you know, you're going to see a horror movie, and I wanted funny in the context of Evil Dead 2. Like, I, I wanted that, but... Um, I'm not going to, you know, shit on Sam Raimi fucking trying to go somewhere different, somewhere unexpected with the story. Um, he set this ending up in Evil Dead 2. This was literally the only place he could go with it. Um, so what he did with it, I thought was fine. Um, like Aaron was saying, the special effects are really good. Um, definitely a step up from what we saw in Evil Dead 2. Um, a lot of the same gags came back. Um, you know, uh, basically Bruce Campbell beating the shit out of himself, but this time it's like little tiny Bruce Campbells. And um, and speaking of Bruce Campbell, he was just literally on point with this character of Ash. He knows this character now. Um, he's like a full-blown smartass. Like his one-liners are fantastic. I love how cocky he is, but you know he doesn't really feel that way about himself. You know what I mean? Um yeah, I'm. Uh, I, I like I said, it's still my least favorite out of all of them. Um, I'm gonna give it a PG, guys. PG. No, no. I'm gonna take it back because I can do that. I'm gonna give it an R. It deserves an R because okay. it is. It's part of the trilogy, um, and I feel that Ash vs. Evil Dead, the show, kind of. If this is where the these movies ended, I I would have gave it a PG, but because it's part of an overarching story and it's just one part, and we still got more after that, yeah, it's it's an R. You need to watch it. It's recommended. I recommend it. If you haven't seen it, you're dumb. Go see it. <laughs> just go see it. Go 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 watch it. Um, <clears throat> and with that being said, it's one of the few movies besides Star Wars that I actually own multiple copies of. I don't do that. Why do I need two copies of fucking Evil Dead? But here you go. I got two copies of it. <laughs> nice. Okay. All right. I'm going to go before Josh goes because I know Josh is just going to fucking bleh, spill all over about this. So, um, Army of Darkness. I share a lot of the same sentiments as everybody else, especially in terms of what hey. Tim says. In terms of what Tim says, this is this is the weakest of the series when it comes to the Evil Dead. Um, this is this is my least favorite by any means. Um, 
this movie does give us the quips. It gives us the one liners. It gives us some great special effects, but I find that the story itself is very convoluted and it did. It didn't seem like it was entirely flushed out when I, when I went back and I watched this movie again, I, I, I tried to go back into it without, you know, the rose colored glasses, as we would say, and watch the movie from a critics, a critical standpoint. And it really, it's got so many fucking glaring problems with this movie, just the movie itself and the story and everything else. And, and you know, that, that might have a charm to some people, but when you come off of the evil dead two and you go to this, you can see the big fucking difference right off the bat. And yeah, it's more of a comedy than it is a horror. So, you know, you can kind of take a little bit away from it there. But aside from the fact that it does give us a more ash, ash character, which we, you know, know and love. And aside from the, once again, the, the quips, quirks and one liners, which, which really kind of take us, you know, for, for a memorable movie going experience. I just, there's a lot about this movie that I just can't get behind. And I don't know why. Like when I sat there watching this movie again, the other day, I, I almost got bored and I'm, I'm ashamed to say that I almost got bored with it. I was like, I was not excitable for the movie. You know, there, there wasn't anything like, yeah, fucking right. And I love this. And like, I remember being that way when I first rented this movie so many years ago. So with that, and I can't pull this back. I'm going to have to give this movie a PG. Boo. You can fucking boo me all you want, but it's going Whoa. PG in me. All right. Boo. You gave it a PG first too, Tim. Yeah. But then I thought I'm wrong. Nah, I consider Tim's vote a PG as well. That's what he said. Josh, buddy. The, the council does not recognize your error. <laughs> The, nice council. Said, the council the council does not recognize your r <laughs> nicely said all right josh spill it buddy yeah all right so again this is my least favorite of the evil dead series and that is including the remake um oh okay. I, I would place it slightly above within the woods just you because just that is so painful remake? to watch yeah the remake reboot whatever 2013 2013 2013 evil dead um, this is not a horror movie. This is a fantasy adventure movie. And I don't even agree with horror elements. There, there's no elements of horror. There's skeletons that they're in every fantasy movie. Um, Deadites? Deadites aren't horror? He chops, yeah. he chops not, up, he chops up his in, doppelganger? Not in the form that they're in, man. He, he takes anyway. a chainsaw and kills his doppelganger. Yeah, I guess. Uh, right. To me, it's in the same way as Brendan Fraser's The Mummy. If you consider that horror, then this is horror. And I don't consider that horror. All right. Um, it's the still a fun does movie. not recognize your opinion. <laughs> 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 it's a very fun movie. Uh, and we get a lot of the final development of Ash as we know him now. This this quick whips and uh, kind of smart-ass character. Um, Effects-wise... Uh, it, it has the, the Hollywood budget, and you can tell. So they've stepped away from the, the Jerry Riggs and the uh, fucking oatmeal and Cream corn. caramel syrup and whatever. So they're, they're into full-on effects at this point, and they got some pretty big names behind them doing it. Uh, the, the castle battle uh, is insane that they were able to pull that off with, like, 200 skeletons with people fucking in ditches shaking their little skeleton arms around. That's crazy. Um... <laughs> I am not able to give this movie an X either, I don't think. Uh, it ultimately does not meet any of my rules of horror. Um, it is barely a horror movie, if you even consider it that. But, given the fact that it continues the Evil Dead saga along, and without it we probably wouldn't have Ash vs. Evil Dead, or The Evil Dead 2013, um, uh, I'll have to give it an R for highly recommended. Um, watch this film. Enjoy it as it is as part of the legacy that is the evil dead um with that being said it's not a horror movie nice so this it also Go i ahead. think at least it used to be my least favorite necronomicon i've, I've grown mm. to love oh, it more 
It is absolutely my least favorite. I hate it. Like, I don't think that the Necronomicon looks good in this movie at all. It's better than the one in fucking 82. Okay, Tim, you got me there. You got me there. So it's my second least favorite. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, Tom Sullivan. Do you place it above? I place it above the Evil Dead 1 Necronomicon then, yeah. Yeah, but not above the the 2013 Necro? No, I, I way prefer the 2013 over this one. I'd say in terms of favorite, Evil Dead 2, yeah. 2013, yeah. Ash vs. Evil Dead. Okay. Because it was a little more cartoony. You know Definitely. what I mean? And it was a mixture of Evil Dead 2 and Ash or, and uh, 2013. Army of Darkness. Because of the, the extra okay. stitching and stuff. Then Army of Darkness, then that one. The only thing I didn't like about the 2013 was there was no face. It was yeah. the only thing I didn't like. Definitely. But the pages, I thought the pages inside. Like oh, the, the pages actual, were dope. They're dope. Yeah, yep. they're dope. Um, they're dope. Again, we don't really even get to see what's inside the Armor of Darkness pages very much. There's like one or two scenes, like the one with the bird, where it flaps around like the monster or whatever. But um, yeah, we don't get to see what's inside of it. It's also much bigger for some reason and has a big N on the forehead. Weird. Yeah, it is weird, isn't it? And it's got like teeth and shit. So. Yeah. I, I've grown to like it a lot more, um, but it still wasn't my favorite. Yeah. So this this is a this is a bit of a divisive movie for us because in all honesty, there aren't too many times when we're really kind of torn like this. P G X R or two R's. And you know, one of yeah. us Yeah. Two R's, Josh. Two R's. <laughs> so I, I consider yours P G plus. P G thirteen. P G plus. <laughs> all right. So with that Gentlemen, it's been a good discussion, but we need to wrap this up for the episode. So we have a very divisive movie that has kind of led us on a a good discussion of the highs and the lows, the goods, the negatives. It's not the strongest movie in a series by any means, but it still still plays really well in the series. And like I said, it gave us a lot of what would be considered, you know, positive notes in the run of the series. You know, you have the quips and the quirks and the great special effects and K and B and Sam Raimi and Bruce Campbell and everybody who's involved. And we do love it for that. And I mean, just cause I say it's pretty good, pretty good. I would watch it again. And I continue to watch it again. It's not just one of those movies that I run out there and say, you need to see it. It's, but it's 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 a pretty good movie. It's it's just what it is. So, with that, I want to take a moment to thank everybody for tuning in and watching this episode of They Cast from the Coast with us. So check us out on Facebook. We're under the Misunderstood Art Company. So like, subscribe, and share out the Misunderstood Art Company. We produce content every week, like regular. We're also on YouTube. The Misunderstood Art Company. With YouTube. over 800 subscribers. Why? Yay! Who said that? Woo! We've reached over 800 subscribers, which, and I will state this again, it might not seem like a big milestone for a lot of people, but for a small like-minded group of people who just want to put out content, discuss movies, and and just talk horror, and produce movie-type content all the time, eh, it's a big deal for us, because that means that 800 people took the time out of their day to say, you know what, I'm going to subscribe, and I will get notifications when these people put out content. So, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I give you a round of applause for that. And, uh, you know, we look forward to continue to producing the said content, and, and hopefully, you know, you like and share out the content that we do and get other people to subscribe to it for us as well. We're also going to be producing continuously all of these episodes on the major podcasting platforms that are out there, including, but not limited to iTunes, Spotify, and Google play. And also we're on Patreon. So open up your hearts and your wallets and subscribe today to Patreon to help us once again, produce this content and until next time, Josh, Hello, Mr. Fancy Pants. <laughs> Love it. Aaron! Into the pit with those bloodthirsty sons of whores. Tim. I'm just really happy Aaron is just so animated tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Stay spooky, everybody. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. See you next time. Good night!